All right, I got a great podcast coming for you here on a Thursday. Tons to talk about in Brooklyn Nets Nation. Buddy, hit us with the beats. As the world turns, my friends, more information around the Kyrie Irving situation, positive news around the potential of him being able to rejoin the team after just thinking maybe he wasn't going to be able to be a part of this roster heading into a big NBA season for the Brooklyn Nets. We dive into it. A lot of different angles. We give our take and, and hopeful outlooks for how this will resolve. And I forget that there's a camera involved in this entire operation. <laughs> we're live on YouTube. Or excuse me, we're streaming on YouTube. Thanks for making Locked On Nets your first listen. We're going to get into every single piece of this Kyrie Irving situation. But first, the theme music. <laughs> You are Locked On Nets, your daily Brooklyn Nets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome back to the Locked On Nets podcast and the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, the Brooklyn Nets every single day. I'm Doug Norrie. You can follow me at Doug Norrie over on Twitter. That is Adam Armbrecht. Follow him at Adam Armbrecht on Twitter. He's also the host of the One Giant Podcast, What's Left of the New York Football Giants, although they're getting a little healthier now. Buddy, how's it, how's it going? Another day, another a lot of talk about Kyrie Irving. I'm kind of here for it this time, I think, um, but we'll see, how, we'll see how this one goes. How are we doing on a Thursday? <laughs> Yeah, we're fine, man. It's all good. We got another preseason game coming up for the Brooklyn Nets, obviously. Uh, but as the world turns, more more information comes out around Kyrie Irving somewhat, um, not suspiciously, but it almost feels like, of course, it would have to be after the statement by the Brooklyn Nets, followed by the Sean Marks press conference. Within a handful of hours or so, you get this uh, additional article in The Athletic that clarifies, not directly from Kyrie, it would seem, but clarifies where Kyrie's stance was on the vaccine, on playing or not playing, and what his intentions are around the possible stance that he may or may not be taking. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's funny, man. I, we, we talked about this before. It's like it's third and fourth hand here right now, and that's probably the hardest part about trying to digest and have concrete takeaways from speculative information, I feel like. Yeah, so Shams Charania from The Athletic, uh, who, again, if you don't follow this stuff, is as dialed in as any uh, as any reporter that there is in the game, besides probably Woj, and they're probably at this point just tied. So they're at the very top of the game when it comes to sourcing, reporting, having inside access. Uh, you really don't get much more inside access than you get from either of those two guys. He wrote a you know, semi-long piece on The Athletic about the Kyrie Irving situation and um, what kind of the what the beginning of the fallout or the clarifications were around him not reporting to the team. You make a good point that this is all third hand. I will say I'll just give a couple pieces of what uh, Shams talked about that are germane to like what we're talking about here. He mentions that Kyrie Irving in his camp has made it clear that he's not anti-vaccine, but more anti-vaccine mandate, mm -hmm. making the clarification that that he's not against getting the vaccine necessarily. He is against the um, regulations around employment that are related to the vaccine, which is so he's framing it more in an employment standpoint than it is around the vaccine standpoint. To be clear here, Kyrie Irving is not quoted in this, in this article. Yep. Okay. So uh, there's a piece where he wants to be a voice around this issue Again, it's not him saying it. It's a reporter <laughs> quoting probably someone from his camp. I, I'm, there's no doubt in my mind that it was from someone in his circle that sure. was that was giving this information that I am nearly certain about. But again, with Kyrie, as in all, as in a lot of things, it's not coming from him. So you're left to just kind of speculate. When you heard about that, this was the report, and I, I, I want, I'm going to get your opinion. Once I want to be very clear. This is not hot. Shams and Shams article is not a Stephen A. Smith hot take, right? Yes, There's two. Right. These are two very, very different things. Different, this isn't. Yes. This isn't some morning show that they need an hour and they need to just talk for an hour. So you're just going to say something bombastic because that's ratings. Like Shams does not report like that. He reports stuff that is sourced. So I have no doubt that this source comes from Kyrie Irving's camp. That I'm 
sure about. That's how these guys operate. They're trustworthy sources for a reason. They always say things that are pretty trustworthy. But I, I do have to bring up the part that it's, again, it's not him saying it. So you just, you still, there is a part of you that just doesn't know what you don't know, I guess. Well, and isn't the problem, too, that when you come from these takeaways, you, what you end up, as you say, okay, some some sources are more reliable than others. Some things are real reporting on a situation versus hot take. But over the length of this, however you want to say a month, two months, three months, the again, the timelines of when the Brooklyn Nets, whether it's Joe Sy in an article, whether it's Sean Marks, whether it's Steve Nash being asked about it, as it seems like things move on one side of it, then the the possible thinking on Kyrie's side seems to shift as well, right? There was a part point where whether, and we talked about it, there was a reference to Kyrie's aunt, who is some member of a board, uh, you know, in some of his philanthropic endeavors. Okay. And we weren't going to put a lot of stock in the fact that she had something to say about it. And yet it was an indication that Kyrie was hesitant about getting the vaccine specifically around what the vaccine was and, and putting something like that into your body, right? There was some hesitancy there. Things change. The Brooklyn Nets take a new stance. And now there's this different narrative around what Kyrie Irving may be thinking or feeling. And all this comes back to, as we said before, the easiest way to know what Kyrie Irving is thinking on any of this stuff would be if he would talk to someone about it, whether it's on social media, whether it's with, you know, right, you said in the Players' Tribune, right? Like you can write it up anywhere that you want to clear the air around where you stand on something. And to the extent of saying, as he's been accredited to have said recently to be a voice for the voiceless in a particular situation. Well, the well best that was be- real, real quick. That, that, that voice for the voiceless, uh, just before we get too far past it, I, that was credited to a source close to him. Yes. He did not so. pers- He did not say that he is not quoted as saying that mm-hmm. that specific, a voice for the voiceless is credited to a source close to Kyrie Irving. Right. So, so it's- take it, take that for what you want. It is not officially coming from him. If that were to be the case, and this is, again, this is a part of it, right? Left to say, if that were to be the case, the best way to be a voice would obviously be to be using your voice, right? So again, and the point being like you, you jumping in and clarifying that rightfully so is a part of the problem here is that all you can do is, is stop and wonder if the information you're receiving is credible. And even when it is someone like Woj, like Shams, where you say the, they are a reliable source of information, how how trust trustworthy do they feel, whatever their source is, in terms of changing the narrative, right? You don't know that, yes, it's honest, it's direct, this is a close source to Kyrie Irving who gave me this information, and also that close source or a different close source could tell me something different next week. The best you, the best thing you can do is provide the information. And then, like I said, we're all fans. Everyone is left to speculate around, around where the, the truth lies somewhere in all of this. Yeah. I will say the part where Shams reports something, because I think there's a different journalistic standard here. I think that, I tend to think that this probably did come from someone very close that like everyone would agree that close enough to be trusted, trusted as far as totally like, and if you just want to compare different pieces, we talked about the Rolling Stone piece that came out last month or whatever it is now. I can't remember. I get these timelines screwed up the Rolling Stone piece that came out that we kind of took some hits at Mm -hmm. that. We thought I I did not think that was sourced. And they even said the sources. And I was like, these aren't really sources. This is, you know, the one was the Kyrie Irving ant thing, which we kind of, even at the time, raised our eyebrows a little bit. Mm -hmm. It does not seem like that had any real legs to it because we've never heard from that person again. And and that story did kind of just go away. Um, I don't get the same sense for this. Also, because the track record around Shams is, 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 is airtight. So it's, I tend to think, and, 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 and the athletics is also. So I, I tend to think when these things go up that, now, whether th- the problem is whether this was the thinking a week ago, that I actually don't know. Like right. this is this is the bigger problem. It's like, is this new line of thinking always has been the plan, or is it? Hey, we're actually taking some hits here, and the Nets actually took this further than we thought they were going to. Mm-hmm. That maybe this was going to be a thing where it was going to be half the home games, and if when I was on the road and talking to media, I would voice my opinion about some of these things. And I would talk about the unfairness of it because I was going to be playing half the games and I'd still be able to practice. Right. There was going to be, I think there's probably some part of this that thought that this situation was going to play out differently. And sure. when it did not play that way and it played in the, Hey, we don't need your services for the rest of the year. <laughs> it was like, Oh, huh. uh, we need to kind of, 
we need to rally or, you know, we need to figure out what's going on here because now this was not how we thought we saw it coming. I think that my guess is that part of it really did blindside them. And that's why we saw a very quick response in the athletic. Like this was nearly instantaneous. Paving paving the way for what we're going to get into it, right? What, what Kyrie's intentions may be going forward over the course of the season. We know where the Brooklyn Nets stand on it off of their press conference. And now this is at least you would think the first stepping stone to saying there's a number of avenues that this could play out. Now, now that, now that you have this information from a reliable source, you know that this is not a closed chapter. The Nets have made their stand and without a change to the mandate in New York city, that's it. Kyrie Irving not going to play basketball with the Nets. This opens it back up to a lot of uh, at least a few different options being on the table. For sure. We'll get into some more of that here in a second. You know, there's some things in life that just aren't that much fun to talk about. One of those could be a sweating, excessive sweating. I've lived through this. Uh, if you know that you've been tr- changing those shirts because, you know, one is going to show sweat worse than the other or better than the other. And you're making your clothing decisions based on that uh, sweating through your shirts for what seems like no reason. Hey, it's not doesn't feel that hot outside, but I'm looking down and I can all I see is sweat. It's embarrassing. You can totally avoid that now if you just get in the sweat block. Sweat block is stronger and more effective than most clinical antiperspirants. You simply apply it at night before bedtime. Go to bed. The next morning, you wake up, wash, and go about your day. You're not worried about the sweat. It's totally guaranteed. It can sound too good to be true. You got only th- over 13,000 reviews on Amazon. It's the number one in the Amazon antiperspirant category. The sweat block is the truth here. I use it. This stuff just totally works. You're not worried about changing those shirts anymore. If someone you know or love is dealing with this, or maybe just you, you have to check out sweat block now. Get it for 20% off at sweatblock.com. Use the promo code locked on or at Amazon CVS. They have it there as well. 20% off sweatblock.com, promo code locked on. And we, of course, want to thank everybody for making us your first listen. We're available on all those great platforms and also on YouTube. Check us out. Enjoy us. It's a two-way street. We appreciate you appreciating us. Uh, what is the now? So if we accept this as being the closest thing to credible and reliable information around it, then what is the what is the next phase here for, for Kyrie Irving? And again, because we haven't still haven't officially heard directly from him, but what what is the next step here? And, and where do you... Th- how do you think the Nets absorbed that information coming out? That's actually probably a good a good follow-up question to it because I doubt that the Nets would have been having that statement and that press conference if they thought this type of additional information was, or this statement, relatively speaking, was going to come out almost immediately after that. I actually don't think this changes the Nets thing at all. I, I, it doesn't change the situation. I don't think they care what the stance is. I think they just want it's 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 binary. It's you have the vaccine, you can play. You don't have the vaccine, you can't play. I I, I just <laughs> right. don't think, I think I from there less anything else that has to do. I don't care what all the mechanisms are that get us here. Yes or no? Again, I'm like I'm I'm team. Just do whatever you want. I don't I actually don't care what other people do for the most part. But I think for the Nets po- point of view, their situation is like, hey. If you think you don't want to get it because it's a medical thing, if you think you don't want to get it because it's a religious thing, if you don't think you want to get it because it's an employment thing, or you think you don't want to get it because, you know, when the aliens come down, that's who the first people they're not going to take. <laughs> I, I just don't think, and I'm not saying he thinks that. I'm just saying they don't it doesn't care. matter, right. It does not matter. It doesn't matter. I think some things are probably easier to talk about than others. But in the end, it's just, hey, you have it and you can play. You don't have it. You can't play. We didn't make the rules. That's just what the rules are. The rules are stupid, but that's just what they are. And so yeah. it, like, and I, I just think that the Nets probably, I, if I'm the Nets and I, and I saw this because our first reaction was around, I thought this was a step in like weirdly the, if, if, if our right or wrong direction is Kyrie, the right direction is Kyrie Irving plays and the wrong direction is he doesn't play. I'm going to strictly speak about it in those two paths. Right. One path is correct or one path is right. For the Nets, he plays. One path is wrong. He doesn't play. This is a step in the right direction, I think, because I think this gives a path to him coming back that maybe the other talk, like the a strict anti-vax talk, uh, like if he was strictly anti-vaccine, it was going to be harder to clear that hurdle. If it's right. not anti-vaccine and it's anti-rules and regulations, it's actually easier to step over that barrier than the other one. Like from a public saving face standpoint, Mm -hmm. right? Like I think you can, I think you can massage that easier in a media presser than you can talking about why you don't want the vaccine because you, you know, don't trust it. I just from strictly from a PR standpoint, I think this, 
actually gives a, a, a an easier PR path to, to coming back on the court than we saw before. And you can fr- and it can be framed totally differently than how other players have had it framed, which is clearly in this total anti-vax thing, which wherever you land on it has become a very polarizing topic. If you're not talking about that piece of it and you're talking about just the rules and governing the governance around it, it actually does sort of skew it a little differently. Well, and if you put it kind of in the same context, and we've seen this from Kyrie in the past, and again, I wouldn't take anything away from his convictions around these thoughts, uh, social issues, right? Going back to the bubble, everything that we've seen him do away from the court, the idea around thoughtfulness around community, I'll I'll frame it that way. I think that that's how you could contextualize what what his thinking very very well may be on this. If you say that, if that's what the explanation is to your point, then it's okay. So not, you know, not unlike we've seen in the past with Kyrie, it was a difficult choice for him to make. He came up against the timeline of it all and just kind of stepped in it, being able to check the boxes correctly to be a part of the team and understand that these are still some things that are weighing on him away from basketball. Okay, fine. To your point with the way the mandates exist. Well, there's no other way around the idea of you're someone who has concerns around getting the vaccine, which means you just can't be here. You just can't play. And that presents a whole other can of worms perceptually, right, right, wrong, indifferent, just from the fan base and the way the organization approaches it. And it also, by the way, makes it easier this way to come back to the team from an organization standpoint, right? Like right. Sean Mark said in the press conference, we'd be happy to welcome back with open arms totally. at some point if circumstances change. And here's the circumstances changing. I was having a difficult time with the thoughtfulness around community and the way it's being approached. And I'm now ready to rejoin the team. The Nets as an organization get to say, We appreciate that. And as we've always said, personal choices are difficult for anyone. We appreciate and respect that. And we're happy to have them back in the fold and prepare to go forward as we planned pursuing a championship. Yeah, I I still don't think that this is we'll make our predictions about what we think are going to happen here. But like I can we do a both and on it? (laughs) What's that? I'd like to do a both and on what we think will happen and what we might prefer to happen. Mine, Mine are pretty close, I think. But the the. Well, maybe not. I don't know. But I, I still don't think I still think that this this talking point still does give plenty of there's plenty of paths from this that don't have him coming back and playing. I, I think that this is well, I said it might be a step in the right direction. That could just be me looking at the situation glass half full because right. there's a glass half full part. There's definitely a glass half empty part with this, which is if you were really talking about how it's an unfair practice to have um your work tied to this thing or your employment tied to something that you you know don't want to do um that and that kind of just came out of nowhere and i don't want to get into a pandemic talk but if we just like if we're all dealing in a, in a new world order around things and you want to frame it like that actually going back and and do and working in that situation would look like maybe not the message you want to send so i think there's plenty of ways that just oh, does yeah, not work yeah, out yeah, with, yeah, with, yeah. with him coming back and so again but this As is the best of a things- worst situation in that way. If you if you if you believe our kind of I think our perspective of Kyrie shifts, you know, shifts with the moment, shifts with yeah. the narratives, wants to wants to put himself in a good position. I'm going to label it as from a PR standpoint, regardless of what his intentions may be. And that's where you can you can keep you can keep tap dancing, but at some point you run out of floor and you're just falling into the orchestra. And that's where I think Kyrie has lived for a, a number of these years around what he voices publicly versus what he maybe realizes could be happening behind closed doors. And this is the hard part with Kyrie. And this is the hard part in talking about him is that we have so many examples of things that he said or done in the past that he has backtracked on later Mm -hmm. that he said that he's shown sort of regret about. Like, I'm not going to give the whole list, but there's examples. There's wanting to get out of, you know, out of not play with LeBron anymore. And he has spoken on the record later and said that maybe wasn't, I maybe would have done that differently. Right. He's yeah. said that in the past. Right. Like last year, he said that there was going to be when Steve Nash was hired as the coach, there was a quote where he said, well, we're all going to be coaches. Right. <laughs> and like some nights I'll be the coach and some <laughs> nights Kevin Durant's going to be the coach. And then oh, later on, yeah, he said, I, mean, I, I should. I wish for those days. I wish for the well, days he, when all he was talking he came about back was out later. And he later and he came out and said, I shouldn't have said that. Right. <laughs> like he, he walked that back. Like we have examples of him saying or doing things that I think that later he has shown some sort of whether it's, you know, large scale regret or just minor regret around having, you know, misstepped. So that also leaves the path open for you to do something different and maybe regret having made a decision. I'm not saying this is going to be that that thing. It might not be. There's plenty of stuff he did and we didn't hear any regret or 
about it, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, it's not like this. He doesn't have a one-to-one track record on stuff like that. But, you know, like, he didn't speak to the media for a long time and kind of got thrown under the bus for that. He sat out for a long period of time last year. No one really knows why. And then came back yep. under, you know, mysterious circumstances. This has just been the roller coaster that this guy has been on kind of for a lot of his career. And so when it's super volatile, making predictions around it or thinking that you see one thing, thinking that one thing is going to make the rest of it kind of work out is also sort of folly. I I don't, that's just been the track record with him so far. So if it sounds like we're kind of pulling our hair out here, it's only because it's just one of those situations that is ongoing and I could see it going any number of different directions. Doug had a full head at the start of this episode. Oh yeah, it was... (laughs) So luxurious. We can't look. Look how many times we're going to say it. We want Kyrie Irving to play. I, like that's it. I just want him to play because we love watching basketball. And we love watching Kyrie Irving play. From everything we've ever heard about Kyrie, he's a great guy. People love him. I've known people that have known him in his personal life. Like I don't know if we ever talked about that on the podcast. I'm not going to go through it. I've known people that know him in his personal life, and this is well before any of this stuff. People just absolutely rave about what great, of, what, how great of a guy he is. Like that is a near universal, a u- near universal thing that happens with people that have met and spent time like real time with him agree that he is a great guy it has nothing to do with that it's it's just this is strictly like from a basketball perspective and nothing is more disappointing than that idea that if i were to meet and interact with Kyrie, i'd probably love the guy but objectively from the brooklyn nets pursuit of championships and having talent on the court standpoint right that's where that that's where i get lost in the in the weeds on Kyrie. so listen it it, it it is what it is. Uh, it seems like maybe it's at least going in a better direction from a Brooklyn Nets standpoint overall and from a Kyrie standpoint, too. But we can get into uh, what we think the ultimate outcome is here, given all of the information we have at our disposal. All right. Basketball is almost back here. Uh, Bet Online actually uh, has stuff up for preseason basketball. So if you're already itching to get in a little basketball action, Bet Online is your number one spot for all pro basketball. They have pro for col- and college football as well. Really everything you could ever think about to get in on a little bit of that betting action. I'm already getting ready for the uh, NBA season to start here. Nets uh, odds on Bet Online. Plus 260, still the odds on favor. Dropped a little bit from plus 225 a couple weeks ago, but feel good about Nets fans. Bet online will make you feel good if you're starting to worry about this Kyrie Irving situation and whether the Nets are still odds on championship favorites. They are over at Bet Online. You can head on over to Bet Online right now. You sign up for an account, that's free, but you're going to want to make a deposit. When you do, make sure you grab that 50% welcome bonus on the first deposit. You have to use the promo code locked on, just like our podcast network, to get your bonus. Football, basketball, boxing, casino games. If you're into those, don't wait. Take advantage of everything they have to offer over at Bet Online. It's the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. Promo code locked on, Bet Online, where the game starts. All right. So here we are at the precipice of the NBA season for the Brooklyn Nets. Prediction time. And I, and I included what I might want. And I know I caught you off guard with it. And I don't, I don't know how lev- how heavy my convictions will be on what I may prefer be the outcome, but what do you anticipate now being the case is, and this I'll put, I'll frame it in this way is this is what the media in general has kind of thrown out there over the last month or so. Kyrie gets vaccinated, returns and plays uh, versus Kyrie is maybe traded from the Brooklyn Nets or Kyrie sits out the entire season on, on whatever, for whatever stance he's taking. Right, well, we almost said this at, 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 uh, earlier in the week on a podcast when we were going to make a prediction and we just didn't because it felt like maybe not the time. And then uh, the news kept rolling and rolling and rolling. But if I had to make a prediction right now, I think that Kyrie comes back and plays. I think this frames it in a way that makes it the path a little bit easier. I think that maybe we wait like. I don't know, a couple of weeks. I don't, it's not going to be in time for the first game of the season. Maybe it's in time for the first homestand. I think you, I think you can start playing once he gets the first shot. I, 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 I'm not sure the exact rules behind it, dude, this guy could have the shot already. I like, who knows? There's not, I mean, they say he's not, but there's no way to really know. No one follows people around. (laughs) Like you could get it and not, and not tell anybody. I'm not saying (laughs) that he has it. I'm just just saying that like you can get the vaccine the Scooby Doo. I'm pretty sure it's like doesn't get automatically reported anywhere that anyone can reasonably go and look without you know at least at this point, right? So I, I think that there's like some world where he already has it, and he's just and he's just sort of playing this sort of like making you know want to make a point. But I think that when it's all said and done, we see a couple more reports come out, something like this. Like we'll see some other 
media salvo that looks a little bit like this, or he actually comes out and says something to the effect of, you know, I don't like that. This is a policy. This is wrong. This shouldn't be tie your employment to it, whatever it ends up being something mm-hmm. along these lines. And then it sets the path. It sets the clock ticking for coming back. That's just my prediction. It's not sourced. I, like we don't have inside information, but I think that if I had to make a prediction based on this latest thing and the dovetailing with the, you are not going to play all season. I think that plus the extension, plus the money, like there's so many factors here. I think that you can, there's a financial path and there's also a, uh, like there's a financial path and there's also sort of a narrative path that can walk you back into it. So my prediction is he comes back. I don't have a firm timeline, but I would say it's not too far from now. Thursday at 9 30 PM. As of this time, that is Doug's conviction on, the, on this matter. What's your point, right? Right. To this current moment. Um, I, I agree with you that I think he does come back based on everything that we know right now. I don't know how long it'll take. I'd like it to be sooner than later or as soon as possible, obviously. I wonder if there'll be any delay there. He, remember, very briefly was able to practice with the team in the training camp out in California. So, And, and by all accounts, they say he's been in great offseason shape and been building back. Remember, go back to the, the time when he said the injury it was devastating to not be able to be there and play with the team. So he's in as good a shape as ever, which is every single uh, professional athlete's tagline for the offseason. Um, let me, before I say maybe about preference, do you, will it bother you at all? If there's no, if there is no explanation, whatever it may be, regardless of what it is, if he says nothing and just comes back into the fold without addressing any element of this and leaves it for the Nets organization to say, we're happy to have him back and we move forward and they don't, they don't ever address it. Will that irk you a little bit? If Kyrie doesn't have some clarification around what what he was working through prior to making the decision to rejoin the team no no i, no, I don't care at all okay I, like it's, I, it's I, fine like, i don't you know well do you care i mean i guess that's the do, do you would that irk you i mean i, I don't well, so on uh, tagging it back to what we said last segment around if i got together with this guy and, and knew him personally interacting with him i think i would like him on a personal level it would that would irk me in a relationship where you go hey man some weird stuff going on you know you mind just clearing the air for me so we can hit the road you know hand in hand feeling good about it and he and it and it was left as eh let's just let's not let's not even bother let's just go ahead and have a good time like i maybe that's going to hang with me a little bit and i and it does dovetail into this sense of what your preference would be we all agree what the talent, what talent you know, Kyrie has, and what he brings to the game, and how he obviously makes the Nets championship uh, odds that much greater. Did at any point did this get to a place for you where where you you said ah, w- w- by whatever it was, then just sit out for the season. Then, well, if if you could trade, make the trade. Like, did you ever get to that point of frustration? We're saying I don't know if you like your talent isn't above, it's not above KD's talent, so I don't know if you warrant me. Uh, you know, me, but, you know, tolerating these circumstances time and time again, much like the Brooklyn Nets organization seemed to get to a breaking point. Well, much like the expectations are low around like the, the lack of volatility, like we've had multiple situations now where he has given no no explanation. So I don't know why it would come now. Right. So I, I, that's where mostly where I land is that we just have other examples of this, of saying something and then having the opposite happen. And so I just don't even know where we would get like, he left. He said he was going to resign with Boston and left and signed with the Nets and never really said why. Right. Like mm-hmm. he got hurt two years ago and there was confusion about the timeline, never said anything, didn't talk to the media and then like never played the rest of the season. And no one kind of knew what was going on. Uh, then last year he just didn't play because he didn't show up at the facilities and came back and never said why. Right. So I just like, I don't know why we would get the explanation now. <laughs> I, I just don't. And so it was mostly just an expectation setting thing. I, wouldn't be disappointed only because my expectations are set around. You're not going to hear it. You'll just, you'll just, yeah, lack just of happen. explanation is fine. Lack of explanation is probably fine for me. That that's relatively indifferent in terms of like preference though. I, there was, there has been moments over the past couple of weeks and we've talked about it on the podcast. It's not, it's not a secret, but there was a point where it was when the Nets set the precedent of all in or all out. I was kind of, I, I got to that place of like, then, then all out. Like, I'll take my chances with it, you know, with what this team can accomplish without Kyrie Irving, what, whatever that may look like. And and you're right. His history and track record, I, I and we said this at the time of the signing, and you, you accept what comes with this, and <laughs> and I accepted it then. And maybe I'm having a little bit of buyer's remorse at this point when you sit here and say, 
is this worth the headaches? Like, and, and you know, if the Nets win a championship, is it worth it? Yes. If it goes by our prediction and he's back relatively quickly and he plays the bulk of the season, then yeah, I, I think that it's it's great and it works out and you you are forgiving of it. But what if he ends up sitting out half the season and then works his way back? Do I think that it's disingenuous to be away from the team for 40, 50, 60 games and then kind of come in and join for the deep playoff run and win a championship? Yeah. I, I, in, in that sense, I, I would be at the point of saying, I don't know if I, I don't know if I want you to be to getting that championship ring for all, for all the efforts of the rest of the team over the course of X number of games, understanding that. You know, Kevin Durant and James Harden and the organization accepted him back. So it's, it's, you know, that's their decision and you, you kind of have to ride with that. But I, yeah, I, I think if you want to be a part of it, it's a lot of what Sean Mark said, like be all in with this. So if he's back relatively quickly and he's a part of this team for the entire season, then I'm good with it. But if he shows up after the all-star break, I, I'm not going to feel so good about the idea of like, yeah, just come into the fold, understanding what you sacrifice not having him and what he provides for you in championship opportunities if he returns. Yeah, that's just stuff that doesn't bother me as much, I guess. I I, maybe it's yeah. like a lack of a – it's like I – like. I don't know. I still have maybe the fan blood in my body. That's what, that's what it yeah, is. I, I, was I, I say, know maybe it's what it is. That's, that's more of a fan. I guess more of a fan. I, I'm a fan of the Nets. Like I want them to win every single game. I just don't get wrapped up in that. Mostly because I'm like, is I, I'm I'm more binary around. Does it give them a better chance to win or not? Right. Yeah. Like if if it was, and I could I could have and I could have scripted your responses to a to a lot of this. I'm definitely. sure, and I could have yeah. said yours too. I yeah. know. I think yeah. we probably knew what we were going to say on this stuff. Um. Yeah. So I think that like in in general, uh, I don't and that's actually why i don't get too crazy around this stuff either because i just it's like i i just want him to play but it's going to be hard for me on a personal level to get really upset about it because i'm less like hey i just want you to play and it bums me out when you don't but it wouldn't make me feel any worse or better when you come back it's just i i if i'm if, if i'm living in a world where i get to choose i want to live in a world where i get to see Kyrie Irving play basketball like that's mm -hmm. that's a fun that's a more fun world to me so yeah. um as far as that's concerned i don't really care what he it doesn't really bother me at all. Like what he does on or off the court. I don't care. And well, he, when he does good things, I, I care about that. Cause he's like a good dude. And like, he gives, he gives of himself a lot. So that's cool. Other stuff I could, I could kind of care less, but when it comes to the basketball thing, we're a basketball podcast. I want to see him play basketball. So that's my, uh, that's my vote. Okay. Tomorrow we have Kane nice. Pittman from locked on bucks coming on. He's going to, we do a little, well, it's kind of a round table, but it's like, two thirds of a round table where Adam and I just talked to him about the nets. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> and we really, we, and we apologized afterwards, but listen, if you listen to our show, you understand how it works. That's how it goes. Yeah. Like you, 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 when you do a locked on nets, when you, when you want to do a round table discussion, you get Adam and I on, you're going to get, you know, it's going to not, it's not the balance. It's going to be, gonna be half. It's going to be so round. It's going to be more of a square table. It's, it's gonna not going to be half nets, half, bo half box in that situation. I hate to tell, <laughs> I hate to do the math for you, but like, I know it says half and half on the screen, half locked on that half, off, but it's really one third Doug, one third Adam, one third Kane. So that gets you two thirds nets. So anyway, Kane Pittman on the show tomorrow. Uh, in the meantime, make sure you check out all of the great stuff we have going up on YouTube, doing some live episodes, uh, following games. We did that last time following the uh, preseason game we might do it again this time after the timberwolves game as well uh, but make sure you subscribe to the locked on nets youtube channel thanks for making locked on nets your first listen and listen i will be excited when Kyrie returns whenever that day comes and when he walks into that gym don't be surprised if someone turns and says zoinks it's him shaggy from scooby-doo <laughs> that one got me oh one of the all-time great poets We'll be back again with Kane Pippen tomorrow talking more Brooklyn Nets basketball.